let's take a uh, problem based on the equilibrium problem based on equilibrium so in problem uh, they have given a smooth cylinder of radius 2 mm which is resting on a triangular groove as shown in figure this one is the triangular groove and this triangular groove is making an angle 30 degree and 10 degree respectively with the horizontal and radius of cylinder radius of cylinder is given that is 2 meter and weight of cylinder is also given weight of cylinder is given that is 150 newton and we are interested in reaction at contact points reaction at contact points so if we see this figure there will be two kind of contact points here there is nothing like contact so contact will be here only at this point and this point so suppose this point is A and this point is B and we know the weight of the body is acting at the CG which is vertically downward that is W. So uh, uh, this is the given information for the problem and we are interested in the reaction at the contact points. And if, if we look this problem then easily we can identify that a smooth cylinder and the smooth surfaces are there so we will not consider the frictional forces and if we see this problem uh, then we can say that the uh, cylinder is on rest so we can apply the conditions of equilibrium but before applying the conditions of equilibrium let's draw first the free body diagram of cylinder so free body diagram of cylinder so we have to first isolate this cylinder from other surface. So now uh, we are having the W which is acting in vertically downward direction. And there are two contact points. So there will be reaction towards the body. From here it will be RA and from here it will be RB. So uh, there are uh, two reactions and one weight is acting on it. So one question arise here, the weight is acting at that point O, but how we can say that the RA and RB will also pass through O. So the reason is that if there are three forces acting on a body and the body is in equilibrium, so for the necessary and sufficient condition for such kind of system is that all the forces should be concurrent. That's why all the forces are passing through. And now by seeing the diagram, we are having three coplanar concurrent force. So we can easily apply the Lemis theorem and we can solve it. So uh, let's draw first the force diagram. So it will be very easy for us. So force diagram basically which shows all the forces acting on a body. So W is acting in a vertically downward direction. RA uh, showing by this way and RB is showing by this way. Now we are interested in angle between these two forces because ultimately we have to apply Lemis theorem for solving this problem. So uh, I am giving you one thumb rule. Uh, the thumb rule is that the reaction at the inclined plane, may, uh, the, the angle uh, made by the reaction at inclined plane with the vertical will be same as inclined plane made with the horizontal. It means the RA will make the uh, angle with the vertical it should be 10 because the inclined plane at A is making an angle 10 with the horizontal. Similarly RA will make an angle 30 degree RB will make the angle 30 degree with the vertical because the inclined plane at point B is making 30 degree with the horizontal. So by this way we can easily uh, find out the angles between reactions and the vertical plane. I, I, I am again repeating this thing. We are using a thumb rule because this thumb rule is coming from the trigonometry. So we are not uh, going into the uh, geometrical details and by seeing the uh, picture itself we can directly um, 
identify the angles. The thumb rule is that reaction at the inclined plane will make the same angle with the vertical as the inclined plane at the same point is made the angle with the horizontal. So that's why we are taking this 10 and 30 degrees here. Now we can easily see the angle between these two forces will be 170 because 170 plus 10 is making an angle 110, uh, 180 degree which is for the straight line. Similarly here we will get 150 degree because 150 plus 30 it is again 180 is for the straight line. So now we can easily apply for Lamy's theorem. So for Lamy's theorem, according to the Lamy's theorem, Ra divided by sine of the angle between opposite two forces, it will be sine 150 equals to Rb sine of the angle between opposite two forces, it will be sine 170 equals to W sine of the angle between opposite two forces, it is 10 plus 30, it will be sine 40. So by taking these two equations, we can find Ra. By taking these two equations, we can find Ra. So just take uh, first equation for Ra. So Ra will be W by sine 40 into sine 150. So the value of W we know that is 150 into sine 150 is 0.5 divided by sine 40 it will be 0.64278 and if you calculate these things we will get 116.6 newton. So by this way we can easily find out the value of Ra. Similarly for Rb we are having Rb was to W by sine 40 into sine 170 degree W is 150 sine 170 is point one seven three six five, and sine 40 is nothing but 0.64278 so we can easily get the value of 40.5 so we can easily get the value of Rb so by this way we can easily find out the reaction at the context surface so by this problem we learn two, two things. If three forces, first thing is that if three forces are acting on a body and the body is in equilibrium, so we can say that it should be the concurrent forces. And the second thing is that uh, uh, we can easily find out the angle between the reaction and the vertical plane uh, by our thumb rule that reaction at the inclined plane will make the same angle with the vertical as the inclined plane is making mm, the, uh, the angle with the horizontal for corresponding point. Let's take an, another problem based on equilibrium. Problem based on equilibrium. It's a very interesting problem. It's lengthy but it will be very useful uh, for understanding uh, the problems based on equilibrium. So uh, there is a, a vessel and in this vessel we are having the two sphere of the same radius R which is resting like that. There is a two sphere and which is resting like that. So uh, these are the two sphere which is resting um, in a vessel and here we are having the contact points here suppose here 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 and here so let's we can give uh, some name to this suppose and the center of gravity which is lying here at the point A suppose this one is point B and this one is suppose C this one is D and this one is E so these are um, the sum points C, D, E are the contact points. Here also one contact points between these two spheres. So this will be O. And A and B are the center of the spheres. And the whole assembly is in a vessel. So and all the surfaces are smooth. Uh, we have to consider a smooth sphere plus a smooth surface. So it means we are not interested in considering the frictional force. So our interest in this problem is find 
reactions at contact points so we are uh, interested in a reaction at c d e and also uh, we are interested in um, at contact point o means the four exerted by one sphere on other sphere so this is our objective for this problem so uh, by saying this problem we can say that it is in equilibrium so we can apply the conditions of equilibrium but before starting uh, applying conditions of equilibrium first of all we have to draw the free body diagram of the sphere free body diagram of uh, let's suppose it is first sphere and this one is second uh, or first sphere so uh, first of all before going uh, into detail these things i will just draw the reaction suppose the reaction at c towards the body will be in that direction suppose it is r1 and for this point reaction towards the body will be r2 and suppose from this point the reaction will be towards the body is r3 and now we can also consider the reaction a uh, weight here is w and weight here is w because both the spheres are same so we can say that w w and one more thing here the uh, reactions at this contact point for this body it will be like that suppose it is p or we can say that it is a contact force and here for this body it will be p here so i am just uh, representing what are the forces acting here so basically the forces acting here will be the contact reaction from c it is r1 from d that is r3 weight of the body and the force exerted by the second sphere or one that is nothing but p similarly in case of second sphere weight of the body will act at the center of gravity in vertically downward direction and from the contact point there will be a force that is p towards the body and similarly for contact point e there will be reaction that is r2 now uh, i have to draw the free body diagram of first sphere so let's take the first sphere along so we are having uh, the weight which is acting in the vertically downward direction from c we are having the reaction so i am plotting like that it is r1 similarly from d we are having the reaction i am plotting like that that is r3 and if you see the contact points there will be a reaction or contact force that is p so by this way we can see that there are the four forces are acting on the first sphere but if you see this the r3 and w so we can take the net force net force means if we talk about r3 and w so i can make the another free body diagram another free body diagram of first sphere like that so i will i am taking the net force of r3 and w so it will be r3 minus w because both are acting in opposite direction it will be r1 and this one is p so why i am converting uh, this uh, four forces into three forces because we can apply the lemis theorem easily if the forces are coplanar concurrent forces and we can save the time we can also work out for the four uh, things but we can't apply the conditions of equilibrium now uh, we can't apply the uh, lemis theorem we have to apply the conditions of equilibrium that is algebraic summation of horizontal forces should be zero algebraic summation of vertical forces zero and algebraic summation of moments of all the forces about the point should be zero but it will uh, it will be lengthy so for applying the lemis theorem i am converting this thing into this so there are several ways for Uh, finding the solution of a given problem but uh, what i am thinking this one is the uh, uh, this one is the easy easiest way to solve such kind of problem so now we can easily apply the lemis theorem but before applying the lemis theorem we we want to know the angles so if you see uh, the our given problem i am again uh, i would like to uh, draw the 
two spheres and we will find the angles. So our two spheres are like that. Here it is in contact like that and here it is in contact like that. These two are um, here if you see this is R, this is also R and in the problem it is given the full thing is B. So if you see this thing, so we can say that this distance will be B minus 2R and this distance we can easily see that is R and R that is 2R. So we can draw one triangle and this angle suppose theta here so we can draw the triangle here by this way we can know it is B minus 2R and this one uh, okay, we don't know about this thing, but we know about this thing that is 2R. So by applying the cos theta formula, that is cos theta, perpendicular upon base, so perpendicular, oh, that is hypotenuse. That is, uh, we can apply the cos theta formula, that is, Based upon hypotenuse because if we apply the sine theta, then we have to know this thing also that is suppose x, but x is unknown for us right now. And by trigonometry, we can calculate it. But right now, with a given uh, data, we can easily apply cos theta that is nothing but base upon hypotenuse. So by b minus 2r divided by 2r, we can easily get the value of cos theta and we can easily get the value of theta. So right now, we will try this thing. And uh, in this problem, the R is given, R is 25 centimeter and B is given that is 90 centimeter and weight is also given that is 100 Newton. So we can apply the cos theta formula that is B is 90 minus 2 into 25 divided by 2 into 25. So cos theta equals to 40 by 50. So it will come around point A and theta is nothing but cos inverse of point A. So we will get 36.870. So we know this angle. So now uh, actually uh, for applying the Lemmy's theorem, we have to know the angle between the two forces also. By knowing this thing, it will be very, very easy for solving the problem for Lemmy's theorem. Let's again uh, draw the free body diagram of first sphere. So we will having this thing R3 minus W. We are having this thing R1 and we are having this thing P. And recently we find out this angle it is nothing but suppose theta and we know the value of uh, theta. That is nothing but 36.87 we calculated. So now for applying the Lemmy's theorem, we have to know the angle between the forces. So by this way, we can see that this angle is 90 degree. Here we are having this theta, so it will be theta. So this angle will be 180 minus theta and this angle will be 90 plus theta. So now we can easily apply the Lemmy's theorem. Lemmy's theorem. We can easily apply the Lemmy's theorem here. So by the Lemmy's theorem, R3 minus W by sine of the angle between opposite two forces, it will be sine 180 minus theta equals to R1 sine of the angle between the opposite two forces will be 90 plus theta sine 90 plus theta equals to P sine of the angle between opposite two forces it is nothing but sine 90 degree. So by this way we can easily apply the Lemmy's theorem and by equating the two equation we can easily find out the values of unknowns. So here uh, we can equate this thing and also we can equate the other equation for R1 for this also we can equate EC. So first we will equate for P. So the value of P will be 
R3 minus W into sin 90 divided by sin 180 minus theta. So P will be R3 minus W. We know the sin 90 is 1 and sin 180 minus theta is nothing but sin theta. So we are having R3 minus W divided by sin theta. Similarly, for R1 also, we can write R1 equals to R3 minus W into sin 90 plus theta divided by sin 180 minus theta. So we know the sin 90 plus theta is nothing but cos theta and sin 180 minus theta is nothing but sin theta. So R1 we will get R3 minus W cos by sin is nothing but cos theta. So by this way uh, we can uh, find the expression for P and R1. Now draw the uh, free body diagram of sphere 2. Sphere second. So if we draw the free body diagram of sphere second, we are having the weight which is acting in downward direction. We are having the reaction R2 and we are also having the force exerted by the sphere 1 or 2 is nothing but P. And we also know angle this one is angle theta. So now again we are having three forces so we can directly apply the Lemmy's theorem. So for Lemmy's theorem we have to we are just interested in angle between the two forces. So this one is nothing but 90 plus theta. This one is nothing but 180 minus theta and this one is nothing but 90 degree. So we can apply the Lemmy's theorem here also because three coplanar concurrent forces are there. So Lemmy's theorem. So by Lemmy's theorem we are having P divided by sine of the angle between opposite two forces. So that is sine 90 equals to W divided by sine of the angle between opposite two forces. So that is sine 180 minus theta equals to R2 sine of the angle between opposite two forces that is sine 90 plus theta. So uh, this is the expression for the Lemmy's theorem and by taking things one by one we can easily find out the expression for P and R2. So first uh, for R2 we will take these two equations. So R2 will be W into sine 90 plus theta divided by sin 180 minus theta and we know by the trigonometry sin 90 plus theta is nothing but cos theta and sin 180 minus theta is nothing but sin theta so we will get w cot cot theta similarly for p also p equals to w into sin 90 divided by sin 180 minus theta so w sin 90 is 1 divided by sin 180 minus theta is nothing but sin theta so we are having w by sin theta so we are having the expression for r2 that is w cot theta and p that is w by sin theta so now we can easily find out the values of R2 here. R2 is nothing but W cot theta. And we know the value of W. It is nothing but 100 Newton. And cot we know the value of theta. That is nothing but 36.87 degree. So R2 will be 133.3 Newton. So by this way we can find out the value of R2. Similarly for P also this is nothing but W by sin theta and we know the value of W is 100. Sin theta is nothing but 36.87 degree. So by this expression we will get the value of P. That is nothing but the force exerted by one sphere on the other that is 166.66 Newton. And by previous uh, free body diagram in applying Lemmy's theorem we are having the expression for R3 also. 
that is nothing but p sin theta plus w so we know the p that is 166.66 into sin that is 36.87 degree plus w is 100 so it will come around 200 newton so we can easily find out the value of r3 similarly for r1 also we are having the expression that is r3 minus w by cot theta so r3 we know 200 w is 100 and cot theta we are knowing 36.87 degree so r1 we can easily on 133.3 so by this way we can easily find out the contact reactions and the force exerted by one sphere on the other although it is a very big example and for our gate point of view uh, we will not see such kind of problems but for our understanding it is very required and it will enhance our understanding in terms of solving the problems based on 